We've traveled all the way here to the Kingdom of Arendelle for this week's Halloween DIY makeover. Our cosmetologist Elizabeth is going to give us step-by-step -step instructions for the perfect Queen Elsa inspired look. Our model Zyla is ready. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do this. What's our first step? Our first step is going to be our foundation for her face. The best way to choose a foundation is to always start by applying it on their neckline. You always want to check because the shadowing underneath there is what's really going to help you to choose the right color foundation. And we're going to apply a little bit of a foundation because we're just basically doing a clean beauty makeup. And this is really to give them the beautiful complexion, right? Yes. So kids don't normally wear foundation. How do you pick a good one for them? You always want to make sure that it is a hypoallergenic application. And if they have any allergies, you always want to make sure to check the ingredient application. You can always go online to whatever makeup it is, and they'll have the ingredients listed for you. And with your makeup, with your foundations, always look where the costume is going to lay, and you would bring that right down to where the costume is. Next up is our eyeshadows. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start with our inspired Elsa shadows. If you have at home a nice violet or a purple eyeshadow, you could get them at any drugstore. You're gonna take your deeper colors and you're gonna apply them right into the creasing of the eye. Creasing, what does that refer to? It's actually right where the bone will meet the cartilage. You can see the indentation right where that happens. And if you notice, I'm just kind of pushing that color in. I don't want to wipe it yet because I don't want to blend yet. And then we also have our shimmer shadows. When you put the shimmer right on the center, it's gonna help to really get that to pop. Since you're doing a glitter-based eyeshadow, is that gonna itch at all? Anything to prevent that? As long as you make sure when you're applying it that you have them keep their eyes closed. And then if you see what I'm doing, I'm wiping away any of the excess that kind of fell down. Also on their lashes, always make sure to kind of gently wipe that off because what is gonna end up irritating them the most is whatever's left on their lashes. We're gonna go in and pick a couple of our highlight colors. Your highlight colors are anything that's lighter and you're gonna take that and you're gonna apply that right up to that brow bone. And now with that highlight, you can kind of go in and start to blend. So you're using multiple colors. What's the best way to blend them all together? The best way to really blend is to, again, start with your darker colors and then go in with a big fluffy brush and really smoke that out or blend it. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our eyeliner. And I have just a basic black liner. It's a cream and I have a small liner brush. If you don't have a small liner brush at home, you can always use a disposable lip brush. Now, since this is a cream liner, do we worry about smearing or smudging or does mm -hmm. it dry pretty well? If you go in and add a little bit of powder over it, it'll actually set that. And for little ones, if you don't wanna do a whole line, you don't have to, you can just do just a little bit at the end rather than lining the whole eye. Zyla, your eyes look positively regal. So what's our next step? So our next step is gonna be blush. And again, because she's Queen Elsa and she loves snow, you would wanna pick something that has a little bit of a glitter in it. So we have these two tones right here that have a little bit of a shimmer. What I usually like to do is start with most of my pigment back a little bit and then form it to the front. The reason why I like to do that is because if you start right here on the apple of the cheek, you'll get too much there and then it ends up looking like a dot. And then I always like to turn my brush to the side and blend it out. What we're gonna do now is we took a little bit of our warmer blush and we're just gonna apply a little bit on the nose because it's a little cold in Norway, so we wanna add a little redness there. So now we're gonna go ahead and apply her lip. We don't wanna put anything too bright because if you look at Elsa's renderings, they're a little bit more pinky or purpley. And we're gonna add a little bit of a purple. Now if you have lipsticks at home, you don't have to use just a specific color. You can actually take a little bit of each and mix them together. Once we get the lipstick on, we're gonna go ahead and powder it with translucent powder and then that'll set the lipstick and she'll be able to eat as much candy as she wants. Remember to tell your mom that as much candy as you want. <laughs> What we have here is a little bit of glitter, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply a little bit before we powder to her lip. 
And we're just gonna apply it right down to the bottom. And is this glitter from a craft store or a makeup store? Craft store. And go ahead and blot that. So we have our translucent powder on our powder puff. Get that powder on there really good. You're gonna just take a small little brush and just wipe that away. All right, lips are done. I see even more glitter. What are we gonna do with it? So we're gonna take this glitter and we're gonna add a little bit to the cheekbone and a little bit to the tip of the nose. If you want to take your glitter, you can mix them together so that you get a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the white together. What we have here is a little bit of our eyelash glue and our glitter. If you don't wanna use eyelash glue, you can also use a little bit of a primer or a moisturizer. And you just take that and you apply it right to where we're gonna put the glitter. So I have one finger that I'm using for the glitter, and then I have one finger that I have the glue on. And then once the glue dries, it'll dry clear, so that way all you see is the glitter. What we have here is crushed confetti glitter that you can get at any craft store. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this to the look as well because Elsa is the Snow Queen after all. You wanna go ahead and just apply a couple little dabs of the glue where it's gonna hit their skin. And remember, with the glue, you wanna wait until it gets tacky in order to stick it on their face. And is there a benefit to doing it on the forehead or temple area compared to other parts of the face? Yeah, you wanna try and stay in the areas that have less movement. You, of course, wanna try and stay away from the eye area and stay away from the mouth area. Makeup is done, what do we have planned for her hair? So we have our lovely wig cap, which we're gonna go ahead and apply before we apply the Elsa wig. You wanna make sure to get your hair as flat as possible. You can do that either by using pin curls or you make two single braids and then wrap it around and bobby pin it. Then you'll put the wig cap on. If you're at home, you just take mom's nylon and you can go ahead and cut it. When you cut the nylon, you wanna make sure that you have a thicker piece at the top. You always want to make sure that the wig cap matches the color of the wig you're putting on. If you wanna tie up any loose ends that are sticking out, you can go ahead and just use the edge of your brush. So when you pin the wig on, do you pin it to the wig cap or to the hair? What you're gonna do is you're going to take your bobby pin and you're gonna grab a piece of the wig. Then you're gonna grab a little bit of the wig cap and the hair. And we have a couple of little snowflakes we're gonna go ahead and put in the wig. And you can get these at the Disney store, right? Yes. Now it's time for the big reveal. Zyla loves Frozen and she shared with me that Elsa is her favorite. Are you ready to see what you look like? All right, let's take a look.